16 yards of organza fabric was used to make the skirts. Each layer is 14 inches. Place on fold to get 7 inches and weave the rough edges. About 3 yards of satin was used to make the base. It's a 180 degree flare. Please check the description box below to find out how to cut a 180 degree flare. While sewing the lighter blue organza, I pleated along and top stitched flat on the satin, just like I'm doing in the video. While the darker blue organza, I faced it on the satin fabric and when you are done, you flip it down. Personally, I prefer the outcome of gathering along flat on the satin as against facing it on the satin and after sewing, flipping it down. When you are done with the layers, attach the waistband. The waistband is 2 inches on fold after sewing. Each layer is 5 inches apart. Here you can see some of the organza faced down while some top stitch directly on the satin fabric. Next, you go ahead to join the center back by 1 inch when you get to the zipper stop point of 8 inches. After back stitching, you can sew it down by 0 0.75 inches to the hem. Place the zipper 2 inches below the zipper stop point. Sew one side of the zipper on the seam allowance and repeat the same process on the other side starting from the waistline down to the end of the zipper as shown. Remove the original loose stitch created to give room to unzip. Bend backward the excess zipper for a neat finish and cut off the excess. The main focus is on the skirt but this is just a sneak peek on how the dress was made. Sandwich the net into the over bust of the upper bodies on the back. Join the shoulder and on the front. Weave all rough edges. For more details on coupling a dress, check the link in the description box. Next, we will be cutting a 180 degree flare for the petticoat. It's about 2.5 yards of hard net. The radius is 8 inches and on fold here I have 42 inches. Connect the radius markings and cut out. Next, you mark the length of 34 inches. That's the length for this skirt. Mark 34 inches on different points to get the hem rounded. Connect the markings and cut out as well. The fabric casing for the boning would be 10 to 11 inches apart. Highlight those areas and connect the points. Here are the strips for the boning casing. It can be as long as you want, but the width is 1.5 inches. Join them together. Notch the 11 inches points on the open side, which is the center back. With a marker pen, you can highlight the lines so it can be more visible, as you can see. Mark 8 inches space on the center back from the waistline since there will be no zipper on this and sew down from that 8 inches point to the hem by half an inch. It is time to sew down the fabric for the boning casing on the lines highlighted. I will be placing the good side on the hard net, sewing it down by 0 0.25 inches all around the lines. When you reach the center back again, leave out about 4 inches of fabric before you cut out. Don't cut out exactly the same point where you started from. This is so because the boning is to overlap each other. The next step is flip down the fabric, tuck in about 0.25 to 0.5 inches and while sewing, try to top stitch very close to the edge of the satin. We are to repeat this process on the three lines. Stitch down the start point of the boning casing. This is done to close one end of the boning channel. Repeat the same process on the other channels. 8 yards of boning by 0 0.5 inches width was used for this petticoat. Burn the edge of the boning to keep it rounded and from the opened channel, you pass through the boning. You keep passing the boning through the channel till you get to the other end, the closed end at the center back. The boning stops moving when it gets to the end point. You are to adjust the other fabric folded, keeping the boning flat and straight 
inside the channel. When you are done with the adjustment, overlap the boning and the fabric on each other, then you cut out. Realizing the fabric is insufficient to cover the boning, I'll be joining more fabric to it. I'll need the fabric to overlap the boning by about 2 inches. Cover the boning edge with the excess fabric, tuck in all edges and with your thread and needle, you'll be sewing the boning on each other. Ensure the hard net stays flat while you keep sewing over the satin and the boning. Basically, the thread and needle secures the boning together. I kept sewing from the bottom to the top over the boning. The main thing is to get a firm finish. Make several knots when you are done and cut off the thread. The space created on the center back for easy wearing, fold it down by half an inch and top stitch. Next, attach the fabric to seal the waistline. Bend excess fabric backwards and sew by half an inch from one end to the other. You start by sewing on the wrong side. The other end, bend in the excess fabric to finish up. Flip the fabric to the right side of the skirt. Tuck in half an inch and while you sew, ensure that the stitch is very close to the edge of the satin. Sew on a straight line till you get to the other end of the center back. This is the rope creating the drawstring on the waist area. Tuck in 0.25 inches on both sides, overlapping each other and top stitch. With the help of a safety pin, pass the rope through the waistband casing. Both ends of the rope casing is open. Adjust and ensure that the rope is even at the end of the day and will create a knot at the center back. This is the look of the petticoat on the mannequin. Wearing the skirt over it and this is the final look. Thank you for watching. Do like, share and subscribe. I got the dress that makes me a princess, I guess.